Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe is the new chairman of the African Union. He was elected in January at the AU's 2015 summit, but his selection was not without controversy. In power nearly three decades, the 90-year-old has a reputation for ruling with an iron fist. And that record has earned him sanctions from both the U.S. and E.U., but Mr. Mugabe says he's unconcerned about how the West views his chairmanship. VOA Zimbabwe service reporter Sandra Naira was at the summit in Ethiopia, and she managed to get Mr. Mugabe talking and stirring even more controversy, this time about equality between women and men. Take a look. Equal work for equal wages. But total parity because we are diff different biologically. President yes. Mugabe was elected chairman of the AU at the summit you attended and you had the rare chance to interview him. What was that like? It was quite a rare chance as you said. Um, a beautiful moment for me as a journalist. Every journalist would have wanted an opportunity to speak with him, to ask him a number of questions. And there I was, I caught up with him before he left you know, his chair. And then I just started talking to him. I said, Your Excellency, how are you? He said, Oh, I'm fine. I said, Oh, um, welcome to the summit. And you are discussing the theme of the summit is women. What are you expecting to do in, when you become the chairperson of the, in terms of pushing this agenda for women? I would, I'll ask you what you want me to do. <laughs> what, what, what I would want you to do as a woman is make sure that we have as many women as possible from grassroots level at all levels. Do you see the problem that the women have? Then he went on and on, and these people wanted to stop him. Obviously, he was saying something that is deep within his heart, but something that is not politically correct in terms of um, what the African Union was saying in its own theme, where he was taking over as chairman and his own personal views. It's not easy for them. They get married. Mm. They must have babies. That's a problem. So what's such a unique moment for you, too, being from Zimbabwe yourself, talk to us about, you know, you're there as a journalist, but you also have a stake in what this president says. That's very true. Coming from Zimbabwe, as a Zimbabwean journalist and a Zimbabwe national, it was a special moment that, you know, I managed to reach out to him and that he didn't rebuff me and his team members knew who I was and they allowed him to talk. But as a person who also is looking at Zimbabwe from a distance, uh, living and working in the U.S., you want things to move in your country and you see things not moving probably in the right direction or you have your own views. And so it, it was good to get close to him as a president. Now let's talk about your coverage of the summit. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? What kinds of things are going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes that we as viewers and readers who see mm -hmm. what the media reports about an event like this mm -hmm. don't get to see? Oh my God, it was massive. The, a lot of meetings happening at the same time as the official uh, summit itself, a lot of side meetings. In particular, this time, the theme was on women empowerment and development in Africa. So there are a lot of meetings looking at women in Africa and involving women and the youth and you know young girls coming together to speak about what they really want African leaders to do for them. And then the number one issue that I think you know dominated the summit was the terrorism in Nigeria, the Boko Haram and Al Shabaab. You know, Ban Ki Moon, Secretary General, was there. There should be a very careful analysis of the root causes why this kind of uh, terrorist and extremism, uh, violent extremism, are spreading. There were many, many meetings going on, you know, private meetings behind the scenes, negotiations about you know, the number of troops that are needed to form an intercontinental rapid response team to deal with these issues, how much money would be required, and the funding of the African Union itself. And also uh, the issue of South Sudan and uh, the peace process, which is not moving at all, which keeps on going, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Too many things happening at the same time, but, you know, it's... It's amazing, it's interesting, it's exciting to be there on, you know, right there where things are happening, where you are just running the whole day 24-7, no time to rest. Uh, you can imagine, uh, 54 African leaders. I saw a lot of progress from the previous uh, summits that I've covered and I would want to say, I think they are moving forward and um, people are waiting to see whether they're going to implement everything that they agreed on, in particular, how to deal and decimate Boko Haram, a threat that is growing within West Africa, that it doesn't go to other regions on the continent.